for sure a lot of people think this is a scam and, and so on and so on it's a copy of ethereum whatever uh, for us it's important um, uh, that the people need it Sergey Kunz is a co-founder and the CEO of one of the fastest rising DEX aggregators in the DeFi space, OneInch. A DEX aggregator is a financial protocol that sources liquidity from multiple decentralized exchanges to offer traders optimal prices via a single dashboard. In the past year, OneInch's monthly trading volume rose from under $80 million to nearly $8 billion as of February 2021. That's just one order of magnitude behind the monthly volume of decentralized exchange Uniswap. But the rise of 1inch hasn't been without hiccups. DeFi leaderboard DeFi Pulse refused to list 1inch until recently due to a falling out between the respective founders. Scott Lewis, the founder of DeFi Pulse, banned Coons from his community, citing threats of violence among other grievances. The two have yet to make amends. I gave him my hand and said, like, well, let's, let's, uh cleared all, all the shit what he had and they just declined and that's fine for me. Join Cointelegraph senior editor Alex Cohen and dive into the history, drama and technological innovation behind the One Inch project in this exclusive Cointelegraph interview. So, okay, let me just start off with um, asking you the first question of how exactly you got into crypto. Um, at what point did it pique your interest and at what stage uh, do you realize that you need to set a DEX aggregator such as one inch? Hi, Alex. So um, first of all, it's a pleasure to, to make this interview with you. And uh, yeah, back uh, to, back to, to, to the roots where we started uh, with the one inch. Uh, the, um, the initial idea was uh, actually from Anton, uh, who suggested uh, to build on a hackathon uh, on ETH New York uh, in 2019, um, to, to, to build a one DApp which would like list all the um, uh, different um, uh, exchanges, and then you can just uh, select one where you can swap for the for the best price. Um, but I, I had also the idea to to improve that uh, by just splitting in small pieces uh, the amount which you're going to swap uh, and uh, just exchange it on multiple uh, sources uh, at the same time uh, to to reduce the price slippage because price slippage is, 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 is was the biggest problem in the DeFi space uh, in the time and uh, actually we built it for us yeah we uh, Anton was swapping all the time and needed uh, the best rate and uh, um, I was playing around with uh, arbitrage bots before that, and uh, yeah, somehow yeah, uh, it was really helpful for other people. Uh, we found out uh, found out it uh, after the the hackathon, and on the hackathon we didn't win uh, any huge prizes, only small uh, ENS prize, three hundred bucks, I guess. So I was able to pay for my uh, um, ticket for the airplane. <laughs> so yeah, this is actually the story. Yeah. So how long did it take for you? and your uh, co-founder, um, Anton, to put everything together. You said it was quite quick, but how quick exactly? Because that's why, like, one of the worries of people that are using DeFi, that things are just put together, sort of slapped together really quickly, and then they get burned. Yeah, look, um, I and Anton, we uh, count already around 16, 17 years of uh, professional experience in software engineering architecture. Anton had much more uh, experience in uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, algorithms and, and math, yeah. So, and we actually built it over two nights and one day before any sleep, uh, I built m most of the part was uh, from my side on the, on the front end, so like TD app and interaction with the user interface. And Anton um, wrote the algorithm and the smart contract, so, uh, we put it together and just like with, without any sleep <laughs> over two nights and one day we were able to deliver it, yeah, in the hackathon. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so the, the project really came to light with um, the token, like people really started talking about it after the distribution of the token on Christmas Eve. Um, so, and this, I, I've read some interviews uh, by you and uh, your um colleagues that you don't see this token as an investment it should be really used as a utility but obviously 
like given the hype around DeFi and everything, it doesn't really matter what you would say the token should be used for. People are going to still be speculating on it. Um, and eventually some may get hurt and burned by the losses. Um, so what, what do you think about this? Like, did you expect some kind of a risk or sort of negative effects from the token when you uh, decided to, well, not just release it, but actually start airdropping it to different people? Yeah, we got a lot of uh, negative feedback uh, from from the community, from the people uh, who bought at the beginning uh, on the release day uh, the token. So actually, the One Inch Foundation uh, issued the token and uh, started the distribution. Uh, the idea behind the distribution to to make the token uh, uh, more decentralized. Yeah. We don't see any financial value behind uh, the token. Uh, so one inch is equal one inch, <laughs> nothing else. So and uh, sure, you actually we we didn't even start with the economics which we uh, planned uh, with with the whole team. Um, uh, the 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 idea of one inch tokens in the first place uh, right now uh, to uh, participate in the governance yeah so you have a kind of ticket with this ticket you get access to to uh, change some settings in the protocol uh, you, of course those people can also participate in the, in the discussions on, on on governance forum for example and make suggestions and so on and so on so we've seen articles that some uh, users of the platform received absolute humongous amounts of coins. Um, others would just get the basic general low amount. So I think one person got like 9 million tokens, if I'm not mistaken, but it amounted to like 27 billion. And um, overall, would you can you like sort of explain how much one inch holds for themselves? Uh, and uh, going forward, are there any other plans to? drop any more tokens like you did just recently a few weeks ago so uh, i have to say that this was not a airdrop this was a token distribution so you, you as user you you got the right to claim this token yeah um decision was uh, done by the by the foundation yeah i already said before to make it more decentralized so and um uh, we had already two waves. So the first wave was for those people who used before one inch token. And uh, the second wave uh, included also um, those people who used our experimental uh, liquidity protocol, which we uh, released um, in, in the summer last year. I guess one guy got a lot of tokens because they provided a lot of liquidity in, in our liquidity protocol. This is the point. If you participate a lot in the protocol, you, you, you can get more tokens yeah uh, which uh, can increase your voting power for example and later uh, you, you get more options uh, to do something with that so and this is actually not bad because yeah this this guy got five millions i'm not sure i'm not sure how, how much it was um maybe five maybe less um but uh, this guy uh, uh, communicate with us. He suggests a lot. He support us. He introduce us to 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 other projects uh, and so on and so on. There's a lot of value of such people who uh, are uh, fighting for us f from the beginning. Yeah. How's the how are the ga gas prices affecting you currently uh, as a platform? So. Uh, we see that uh, people still swapping, yeah, because they have to swap. Yeah, some people have uh, loans somewhere and they have to repay. Uh, we we have seen a lot of liquidations in in uh, last days, so um, yeah, the huge huge gas prices uh, is I would say is bad for for the the whole space. Uh, we need a solution for that and um, we try to get in touch with the miners and uh, suggest that should they should increase the block uh, size but uh, they somehow are really passive so and we hope to see the ethereum 2.0 if we stick with this sort of scaling and ethereum 2.0 are you do you intend to stick to ethereum or maybe you are look will be looking to sort of fix the issues that so plaguing the whole industry really right now. Um, there was an announcement about um, near integration uh, quite recently. Uh, but yeah, overall, what, what are your thoughts on this? Are you just going to stick it out and wait for Ethereum to, to come through? 
So first of all, I have to say um, something uh, better uh, compared to Ethereum can be only Ethereum. Uh, so and we are uh, waiting for Ethereum 2.0, uh, but uh, for sure we have to 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 scale. Uh, I, I would say it's horizontally. Um, um, we uh, we announced already a co collaboration with uh, Near Protocol because uh, we are like friends with them and. Mm, Anton was working for them. I, I had also um, like a month or two of working, helping a little bit them um, in 2019. So and um, Anton wrote the, the Rainbow Bridge, which allows us to move funds from Ethereum to uh, to Near Protocol. And as soon if uh, Near Protocol supports uh, if, uh, Ethereum smart contracts, and they are almost done with that, how I know. Uh, we will for sure deploy there and we will uh, give you an option to switch in uh, our user interface uh, really uh, um, easy to, to this uh, protocol. We announced also a collaboration with uh, Tron. Uh, for sure, a lot of people think this is a scam and, and so on and so on. It's a copy of Ethereum, whatever. Uh, for us, it's important um, uh, that the people need it. Yeah, there are people who use it. And we see uh, also, yeah, DEXs there on the platform, yeah. So, and if you have DEXs there, we can aggregate. Also wanted to ask you about your relationships with other uh, sort of DEXs and DEX aggregators and just DeFi projects out there. So, for example, Uniswap. Uh, would you say there was a rivalry between you and that platform, even though you kind of use it to route the volume um, through it? And uh, likewise... Um, there was there was there were also stories about DeFi Pulse um, not too long ago. Um, any updates on that from your side? Yeah, first of all uh, about the DeFi Pulse. So uh, yeah, we had uh, conflict. Uh, we have still conflict with uh, the founder of DeFi Pulse and DexIG because they uh, just use our smart contracts without uh, asking for that because it was on the copyright uh, on the beginning uh, when we started with one each um, protocol uh, aggregation protocol and uh, we wanted just just this, that they mention us in in this in the source code when they publish uh, our pieces of uh, codes yeah um, and uh, yeah and there were some miscommunications with them and uh, uh, some bad jokes also from my side. We, we but we, we try to keep to, to stay friends uh, with uh, most uh, most of the projects or with all of the projects with different pools. Like I, I gave him my hand, you know, like to to to, <laughs> to the um, uh, founder of uh, different pools on ETH Denver last last year. Uh, I gave him my hand and said like uh, let's let's. Uh, cleared all, all the shit what he had and they just declined and that's fine for me if, if they feel like that it's it's okay uh, with other projects um maybe first about the pools they um they uh, actually merged our uh, pull request to to uh, get us listed uh at least on the test test platform and maybe already on the main on mainnet so um yeah that's great but we, we needed a uh, pressure uh, social pressure from so that's why we published this tweet because we tried first with emails and uh, only social pressure helps so about about other projects like uniswap i, I would say we are we are friends uh friends but uh, we are talking like once a year uh, for sure they have from my point of view a little bit fear uh, because uh uh, we uh, we uh, introduce our own liquidity protocol. It's uh, much more efficient than uh, Uniswap because we charge fixed also amount of fees. Okay, um, and just zooming out uh, onto sort of the DeFi uh, space in general, uh, what do you think will happen to DeFi in twenty twenty one, and uh, what do you think sort of about the negatives and the positives that the industry has developed um, up to this point? Will some of those get resolved or will some things get improved on? So what are your general thoughts on, on this? So I, I see um, I see a huge pain point right now is the gas price. Yeah, no, it's not possible to onboard new people right now on Ethereum because they have to pay a lot of money, like 100 bucks for like 50 bucks for transaction, 100 bucks for staking in a contract. It's, it's a huge amount. We will see um, uh, solving these problems with uh, layer two solutions. Um, 
or improving this uh, um, problem, um, improving this uh, issue by uh, seeing uh, people moving to other chains like Binance Smart Chain, for example. We, we will see uh, 2021 um, people moving to layer two uh, solutions uh, to, to s scale a little bit. Uh, um, Optimistic roll-up uh, is going to really soon, what I understood uh, in the mainnet, and uh, for sure we will participate in this movement. And uh, we are waiting for uh, Ethereum 2.0. Yeah, uh, how it said, better than Ethereum can be only Ethereum. <laughs> so and uh, we we need we need uh, to move fast. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah. The, the main pain point is the gas price, I guess, and uh, it should be uh, better with uh, additional side chains or better for sure layer two with Optimism, for example, or ZK Snarks. So do you think adoption will come to DeFi once the sort of the gas fee issue is ha taken care of? Not, not only gas uh, fee is a problem, also the, the amount of transaction, uh, which can be uh, um, uh, covered by by the miners or by um, uh, yeah um, by the nodes, and uh, when we have great throughput and lower gas costs, then we can build much better products with better u user experience. Well, I guess that's that's all I wanted to cover. So yeah, uh, thank you very much for your time. It was a great pleasure to talk to you. Great. Thanks. Thank you as well. Uh, it was a pleasure also to give this interview.